the quaint, snow-blanketed town of Ellington, a calm winter morning was about to take a chilling turn. The Ellington Police Department, typically used to handling mundane, small-town incidents, received two urgent calls that would forever change the fabric of their quiet community. The first call came in, crackling through the radio with an intensity that immediately caught the attention of the officers. A sense of urgency filled the air as they listened to the dispatcher relay the message. An alarm had been triggered at a residence in a typically peaceful neighborhood. Before they could fully process this information, another call came through. This one was different, more personal. It was a plea for help. The voice on the other end was frantic, filled with fear and desperation. It was a call from Richard DeBate, a well-known resident of the community. As the officers rushed to the scene, the wintry roads seemed to mirror the icy grip of apprehension that now enveloped their hearts. They knew Ellington like the back of their hands, a place where everyone knew everyone else, and such calls were rare and alarming. Arriving at the debate residence, the officers were met with a scene that seemed to leap straight out of a detective thriller. The front door ajar, the silence of the house ominously welcoming them in. As they stepped inside, each officer felt a sense of foreboding, their trained instincts alerting them to the fact that what lay ahead was something sinister, something that would shake their understanding of the small town they thought they knew so well. This was no ordinary call. This was the beginning of a seven-year journey into a harrowing tale of mystery and betrayal, a journey that would test the mettle of the Ellington Police Department and shock the close-knit community to its core. And so, on that fateful winter morning, as the officers ventured deeper into the debate residence, little did they know that they were stepping into a real-life detective thriller, one that would reveal a truth more bizarre and tragic than any fiction. In the heart of the small American town of Ellington, Connecticut, a story of kindness and ambition was being written. This chapter of our tale begins with the birth of Connie DeBate on a warm summer day, July 31. 1976. The youngest of four siblings, Connie grew up surrounded by the love and care of her family in a close-knit community. From her early years, Connie's life was marked by a radiant warmth and an innate desire to help those around her. Her smile could light up a room, and her generosity knew no bounds. Friends and family fondly remembered how she would go out of her way to help a neighbor or volunteer for community events. As she blossomed into a young woman, these traits only grew stronger. Connie was the kind of person who would listen intently, her empathy touching the hearts of those she met. It was this compassion that guided her towards a career where she could make a difference. The medical field. Connie's journey led her to the University of Connecticut, where she immersed herself in her studies with a passion and determination that inspired her peers. She had a vision for her life one where she could use her knowledge and skills to bring comfort and care to those in need. After university, her path took a turn towards the corporate world, yet her heart remained in service to others. She joined a pharmaceutical company, excelling in the sales department with her unique blend of intelligence and empathy. But that wasn't all. In her hometown of Ellington, she became the vice president of a charitable organization. This wasn't just any organization. It was one that provided urgent medical aid to those who couldn't afford it, a cause close to Connie's heart. Her life was a tapestry of selflessness and service, of touching lives and spreading kindness. Yet, amidst her professional achievements and community service, Connie nurtured another dream, a dream of love and family. And soon, as the new millennium dawned, that dream began to take shape. She met Richard, a man who would become not just her partner, but the father of her children, the architect of her joys, and, unbeknownst to her, the harbinger of her darkest hours. Their romance blossomed, and on July 4, 2003, they vowed to spend their lives together. Little did Connie know, as she stood there in her wedding dress, smiling brightly at a future she believed was full of love and happiness, that her life's story would take a turn so dark and twisted that it would become a tale of caution, whispered in the hushed tones of disbelief in the very town that had nurtured her kind heart. The early 2000s in Ellington were years of new beginnings and shared dreams for Connie and Richard debate. 
The love that had blossomed between them on their wedding day, under the bright July sky, continued to grow as they embarked on the journey of building a life together. Their home was filled with laughter and the pitter-patter of little feet as they welcomed their first son into the world. This bundle of joy was a living testament to their love, and the debate's happiness seemed to multiply with his every giggle and step. A few years later, their joy doubled with the birth of their second son, bringing even more warmth and happiness into their household. Richard and Connie, now a family of four, decided it was time for a new chapter. They began the search for a perfect home, a place where their boys could grow, play, and make memories. Their search ended at a beautiful house on the outskirts of Ellington. It was more than just a house. It was a dream realized, a sanctuary for their growing family. Spacious and nestled in a tranquil neighborhood, it seemed like an idyllic setting for their sons to thrive. The backyard of their new home was a vast canvas of green, a playground for their children's imaginations. The boys could be seen running and playing, their laughter echoing through the air, a sound that brought smiles to Connie and Richard's faces. Life seemed almost perfect. The debates became a well-known and respected family in their community. Their home was not just a private haven, but a social hub where friends and family gathered, celebrating life's little moments and milestones. But behind the facade of this seemingly perfect life, dark clouds were gathering. Unbeknownst to their friends and the tight-knit community, not everything was as blissful as it appeared. The debate family, the very picture of happiness and success, was on a collision course with a fate so grim that it would shatter the tranquility of their lives and leave the town of Ellington reeling in shock. As the years passed, the DeBate family continued to live what many would consider an exemplary life. But as the saying goes, appearances can be deceiving, and in the DeBate household, secrets lay hidden, biding their time, waiting for the moment to unravel the tapestry of this family's life. December 23, 2015, dawned like any other winter day in Ellington with the town wrapped in a serene, snowy blanket. But beneath this calm facade, a terrifying sequence of events was about to unfold in the debate household, events that would forever alter the course of many lives. As the morning sun rose, casting a soft glow over the snow-covered streets, an eerie silence enveloped the debate residence. This silence was abruptly shattered when the police received two urgent calls. The first was an alert from a security company about an alarm at the debate home. Within moments, another call came in, this one far more personal and chilling. It was Richard debate, sounding frantic and desperate, pleading for help. Responding with swift urgency, the police officers rushed to the debate residence, their minds racing with possibilities. What emergency could have befallen this seemingly happy family? The quiet streets of Ellington offered no clues, only the hush of unanswered questions hanging in the cold winter air. Upon arrival, the officers were greeted by a scene that was as perplexing as it was horrifying. The front door was ajar, an ominous invitation into a home that bore silent witness to a nightmare. Stepping inside, the officers were met with a chilling sight. Richard debate, partially tied to a chair his body bearing the marks of a violent struggle. But the horror didn't end there. A trail of blood led them to a more gruesome discovery. In the basement lay Connie debate, lifeless, her body telling a tale of brutal final moments. Next to her was a pistol, its presence a haunting echo of the violence that had occurred. The serene morning had turned into a living nightmare. The peace of the small town shattered by a crime that seemed to have leaped out of a detective thriller. The officers, hardened by their profession, felt a chill that went beyond the winter cold. This was a tragedy that hit close to home, a stark reminder that evil could lurk in the most unexpected places. As the investigation commenced, the questions multiplied. Who could have done this? Why attack this family? And what dark secrets lay hidden within the walls of this home? These were questions that would take years to answer, unraveling a web of deceit and revealing a truth more twisted than anyone in Ellington could have imagined. In the aftermath of that fateful morning, as the community reeled in shock and grief, 
The story of Connie DeBate's tragic end began to unfold, a story that would challenge the perceptions of everyone who thought they knew the DeBate family. Before the shadow of tragedy darkened her path, Connie DeBate was a beacon of light in the Ellington community. Her life, a tapestry woven with threads of kindness, empathy, and a deep-seated desire to help those in need, painted a picture of a woman who was much more than just a devoted wife and mother. Connie's benevolence was not confined to the walls of her home. She extended her caring nature to the wider community, touching lives in profound ways. Her role as the vice president of a local charity was a testament to her selfless spirit. This organization wasn't just a line on her resume. It was a reflection of her core values, a way for her to give back to the community that she cherished so deeply. Her drive to make a positive impact in the world was evident in her career as well. Working in pharmaceutical sales, Connie wasn't just selling products. She was providing solutions, offering hope and comfort to those in distress. Her colleagues remembered her as a person who brought warmth and sincerity to every interaction, a rarity in the competitive corporate world. Connie's kindness extended beyond her professional life. Neighbors recalled her friendly smile, the way she would always stop to chat, to ask about their day, to offer help in any way she could. She was the kind of neighbor everyone wished they had, the kind of person who made a community feel like a family. But Connie's most profound impact was on her family. Her two sons, the center of her world, grew up basking in the glow of her love and care. She was their protector, their guide, their source of unconditional love. Her husband, Richard, appeared to be the beneficiary of her love and support, a partner in building their beautiful life together. Yet, behind the warm smile and the kind eyes, there were hidden depths to Connie that few could see. Her life, so full of giving and caring for others, also held its share of personal dreams and aspirations. Dreams that were tragically cut short on that cold December morning, leaving behind a legacy of love and a community struggling to make sense of a senseless act. As the investigation into her death unfolded, it became increasingly clear that the Connie debate known to the world was only a part of the story. The full narrative of her life, her hopes, and her dreams lay intertwined with secrets that were yet to be uncovered, secrets that held the key to understanding the true nature of the tragedy that befell her. In the aftermath of the chilling discovery at the debate residence, the quiet town of Ellington found itself enveloped in a thick fog of mystery and disbelief. The investigation, initially pointing towards a tragic home invasion, began to take a perplexing turn as detectives delved deeper into the events of that fateful December morning. The key to this enigmatic puzzle lay in the hands of the seemingly grief-stricken husband, Richard DeVate. As he recounted the events to the police, his story was fraught with inconsistencies and gaps that puzzled the investigators. He spoke of an intruder, a violent struggle, and a desperate fight to save his family. But the pieces just didn't fit together. The first crack in Richard's story appeared when the trained police dogs failed to pick up any scent of an intruder. This was peculiar, as these dogs were skilled in tracking even the faintest traces of human presence. Yet, in the debate home, they found nothing that indicated someone else had been there. Furthermore, the timeline of events, as narrated by Richard, raised several red flags. According to him, the entire ordeal lasted mere minutes, a brief but deadly encounter. However, the evidence suggested otherwise. The security system's logs, the sequence of the calls to the police, and the physical evidence at the scene painted a different picture, one that contradicted Richard's account. As the detectives probed further, Richard's narrative continued to crumble. His description of the intruder was vague and inconsistent. He wavered on details about how the intruder had entered and left the house, and his account of the sequence of events kept changing with each retelling. The wounds Richard had sustained, supposedly in the scuffle with the intruder, also raised suspicions. They were superficial, almost as if they were self-inflicted. This detail stood in stark contrast to the brutal scene in the basement where Connie's lifeless body was found. The community which had rallied around Richard in sympathy, began to view him with a growing sense of unease. 
Whispers turned into open speculation as people started to question the narrative he had presented. How could a man so well-known and respected in their community be capable of deceit? Or worse, could he be involved in something far more sinister? As the investigation continued, the veil of the perfect life that the debates seemed to lead started to lift, revealing a complex web of secrets and lies. The truth, as it began to emerge, was more disturbing than anyone in Ellington could have anticipated. The case that had started as a tragic mystery was slowly morphing into a tale of betrayal and deception, with Richard DeBate at its center. As the investigation into Connie DeBate's tragic death continued, the quaint town of Ellington was engulfed in a cloud of suspicion and disbelief. The once clear-cut case of a home invasion began to unravel into a much more complex and sinister plot, with Richard DeBate's every word and action under intense scrutiny. The detectives, seasoned in the art of discernment, began to piece together a narrative far removed from the one Richard had presented. His initial portrayal as a distraught husband was now overshadowed by mounting evidence that painted a different picture, one filled with deceit and hidden motives. The first shadow of doubt was cast by the discovery of Richard's extramarital affair. This revelation sent shockwaves through the community, shattering the image of the happy family man. The affair wasn't just a fleeting indiscretion. It was a sustained relationship that had been kept hidden from Connie and those around them. As the layers of Richard's double life were peeled back, more unsettling details came to light. Financial records revealed a troubling picture of the debate household. Despite outward appearances of prosperity, the family was mired in financial difficulties. What was more damning was the revelation that Richard had been funneling money to support his mistress, further straining the family's finances. Adding to the growing list of incriminating evidence was the timeline discrepancy. The meticulous analysis of the home security system and Richard's own electronic devices contradicted his account of the events. The data showed him at home at times when he claimed to have been elsewhere, and the sequence of the alarm being armed and disarmed didn't align with his story. The discovery of Connie's fitness tracker data was a pivotal moment in the investigation. It showed activity and movement long after the time Richard claimed she had been attacked. This piece of digital evidence was a silent witness, contradicting Richard's version of events and suggesting a far more horrifying truth. The community's perception of Richard began to shift dramatically. Whispers turned into outspoken accusations and friends and neighbors started to question everything they thought they knew about the man they had once trusted and respected. As the investigation delved deeper, it became increasingly apparent that the tragedy that befell Connie DeBate was not a random act of violence, but a meticulously planned crime. A crime that pointed towards a man who had woven a web of lies so intricate that it took a tragedy to unravel it. In the heart of Ellington, a town once marked by tranquility and trust, a sense of betrayal and sorrow began to take root. The case was no longer just about finding justice for Connie. It was about uncovering the truth hidden behind the facade of a seemingly perfect family. The shadows and doubts cast by the investigation were slowly bringing to light a tale of deception that would leave a lasting mark on the community. In the quiet investigation rooms of the Ellington Police Department, Detectives sat hunched over computers, sifting through a sea of digital data. This digital odyssey was about to unveil startling revelations in the Connie debate case, echoing truths that no one in the quaint town was prepared to hear. As the digital forensic experts combed through the data, a timeline began to emerge, starkly contrasting Richard's account of the events. The security system's logs, a silent witness to the comings and goings at the debate residence, told a story of manipulation and deceit. The most damning piece of evidence came from an unlikely source, Connie's fitness tracker. This small device, typically used to monitor steps and physical activity, became the voice of the victim from beyond the grave. The data revealed that Connie was still moving around the house long after Richard claimed she had been attacked. This revelation was a digital echo that reverberated through the investigation undermining Richard's narrative and pointing towards a more sinister sequence of events. 
Equally telling were the findings from Richard's own electronic devices. His smartphone and computer painted a picture of a man deeply entangled in a web of lies. Text messages, emails, and internet searches uncovered his affair and financial troubles, adding layers to the motive for a crime so heinous. The digital evidence was overwhelming, and as it piled up, the walls of Richard's fabricated story began to crumble. The man who had once been seen as a victim, a grieving husband, was now emerging as the architect of a calculated and brutal crime. In the quiet town of Ellington, the revelation sent ripples of shock and disbelief. How could a man, known to many, harbor such dark secrets? How could a family that appeared so perfect on the outside hide such turmoil and deceit? The investigation, now armed with irrefutable digital evidence, was drawing to a close, but the story was far from over. The truth about Connie DeBate's tragic death was now clear, but the why still lingered, a haunting question that echoed in the minds of all who had known her. As the case progressed towards its conclusion, the residents of Ellington grappled with the reality that had unfolded in their midst. The digital echoes from Connie's fitness tracker and Richard's devices were not just pieces of evidence. They were stark reminders of the inescapable truths that technology can reveal, truths that lay hidden behind the facade of normalcy. The once tranquil town of Ellington was now the backdrop for a courtroom drama that gripped the hearts of its residents. As the trial of Richard DeBay for the murder of his wife, Connie, commenced, the courtroom became a theater where the final act of a tragic tale was about to be played out. The prosecution presented a case built on a foundation of digital evidence, irrefutable data from Connie's fitness tracker, and Richard's own electronic devices. Each piece of evidence was like a puzzle piece, fitting together to form a picture of premeditation and deceit. Richard's changing stories, once just inconsistencies, now appeared as calculated attempts to mislead. His motives, revealed through his affair and financial struggles, painted a portrait of a man driven to desperate measures. The defense, in turn, attempted to cast doubt on the digital evidence and the prosecution's narrative. They argued about the reliability and interpretation of data from fitness trackers and security logs. Yet the overwhelming digital footprint left by Richard himself was hard to dispute. As the trial progressed, the people of Ellington watched with bated breath. The Richard they thought they knew was clashing with the Richard being portrayed in the courtroom. The trial wasn't just about the fate of one man. It was a moment of reckoning for the entire community, forced to confront the unsettling truth that the evil they read about in news stories could exist even in their idyllic town. Finally, after days of testimonies, evidence presentation, and heart-wrenching statements, the jury reached a verdict. Richard DeBate was found guilty of the murder of his wife, Connie. The courtroom, filled with the tension of anticipation, erupted into a myriad of emotions as the verdict was read. For some, it was a relief, a sense of justice for Connie. For others, it was a moment of profound disillusionment. As Richard was led away, the reality of the situation sunk in. A family was shattered. Two young boys were left without a mother, and a town's innocence was lost. The trial might have concluded, but its impact would linger in the hearts and minds of the people of Ellington for years to come. In the wake of the trial, Ellington was left to grapple with the aftermath of a tragedy that had unveiled the darker side of human nature. The case of Connie DeBate was a stark reminder that behind the facade of normalcy could lie secrets capable of shattering lives. The town would heal, but the scars of this saga would forever be a part of its history. In the quiet aftermath of the trial, the town of Ellington was enveloped in a somber reflection. The streets, once bustling with the innocent laughter of children and friendly greetings, now carried whispers of the tragedy that had unfolded. The case of Connie DeBate had come to a close, but its echoes lingered in the hearts of the community. Connie, remembered for her kindness, her warm smile, and her selfless dedication to others, left behind a legacy that transcended the grim circumstances of her death. In the wake of the tragedy, the community rallied to honor her memory, not for how she died, but for how she lived. Charitable events were organized in her name, 
with proceeds going to the causes she had held dear. The local charity where she had served as vice president saw an influx of support, inspired by her passion for helping those in need. Connie's spirit, characterized by love and service, continued to live on in these acts of kindness. For Richard and Connie's two sons, the journey was more personal and painful. Robbed of their mother's love, they faced a future without one parent and with the other behind bars. The community, aware of the boys' loss, came together to provide support, ensuring that they would grow up surrounded by love and care, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of tragedy. The trial had been a cathartic process for many in Ellington. It had brought closure, but it also opened old wombs, forcing the town to confront uncomfortable truths about trust and the facades people maintain. The debate case became a cautionary tale, a reminder of the complexities hidden beneath the surface of everyday life. As time passed, the rawness of the tragedy began to fade, but its impact remained. Ellington, once a symbol of small-town innocence, had been changed forever. The case had stirred conversations about domestic violence, mental health, and the importance of community vigilance. The legacy of Connie debate, however, was not defined by her tragic end, but by the positive impact she had made during her life. Her memory served as a beacon of hope and compassion, inspiring others to live with kindness and empathy. In the end, Ellington began to heal. The community, bound together by shared grief and a collective journey towards understanding, found strength in unity. Life moved on, as it always does, but the lessons learned and the memories of Connie debate remained, etched in the heart of a town forever changed.